Hey Gifted Crafters, welcome back to my channel. If you're tuning in for the first time, my name is Nancy with Gifts HQ. And if you're wondering what this channel is all about, I host weekly live sessions and we talk about all kinds of crafting items from knitting, crocheting, sewing, embroidery, decoupage, and so much more. So sit back, relax. We're going to have a great time today because I'm really excited for what I'm going to show you today. Let's see. Last week, we talked about some Dollar Tree items that you can get and make gifts from, and that was live number 10. So today we're doing live number 11, and I've got whole different things planned up for you. But if you're interested in learning more about little gifts that you can make using items from the Dollar Tree, please go ahead and go back to watch last week's live because I showed a couple of different ideas. And if you're in the market for maybe selling some of these craft things or just looking for little gifts for your family and friends, that's something that you can go back and look at. So um, tune into that. Now, the things we have for this week, we're gonna decoupage with mulberry paper and we're gonna do it together. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's just go over a couple of things that um, we have here. And if you have any questions at any point in time, I'm gonna keep checking the chat. So just go ahead, interact with me, interact with everyone. If have questions or have any tips or other things that maybe I didn't mention or you know something that you guys do, please go ahead and put it in there because it's something that I like to do is share the information so we can all do all kinds of crafts together and we get better and better at because we just share all the information with each other. Alrighty, so what are you gonna need to decoupage with mulberry paper? I've got all the materials for you and some of these materials you're gonna have right there in your home. You'll be surprised, they're very simple materials. Okay, so let's start with that. First off, I did get a little bit of this parchment paper and I'm gonna just kind of put it down here and see if I can line it up for you guys because I want to kind of protect my little space here. So I did bring that, got a little bit of masking tape. So if you wanna protect your work area, you know, just throw a little bit of paper, you can do wax paper, parchment paper, you know, um, cardboard, anything just to protect your area because you don't want to get any of that glue or water or anything like that on there. So I just want to protect it to make sure that we're good. So I'm just going to tape it down just so it doesn't kind of cramp up on me. Okay, so that's that. Now, let's go over through some of these materials. So, what are you gonna need? Well, first thing that you're gonna need is just a tiny bit, little bowl of water. So I'm gonna put that to the side. Um, some scissors, please do not use your sewing scissors. These are just crafting scissors that I have. Very simple scissors, you know, just any in your home, just do not use your fabric scissors, please. <laughs> These are specific for whenever you're doing any type of other project. So do not dull your sewing fabric scissors for this project, please. <laughs> okay, the next thing you're gonna need are either some cotton balls or cotton swabs. I've got these little circle things that I picked up and a sponge brush. And you're going to want to try to get a little paintbrush just a small one doesn't have to be anything big so it's definitely something that you're gonna want to use it's you don't need it for much if you don't have one it's okay because what you can do is just use your fingers as well and i'll show you that in just a few minutes now i picked up a water pen and they started to sell these at the dollar store now, what I can tell you is I've never used it. I just filled it up today. Haven't used it yet. I just kind of dabbled with it on my finger and I can see that it does release the water, which is pretty nice because it just kind of, it's like precision to keep the water, you know, controlled because you don't want to put tons of water on your napkin. 
So this is pretty cool. Um, I like it. I got it at the Dollar Tree and it come to in a pack. It's called a water brush pen at the Dollar Tree by Crafter Square. So, you know, pretty neat to have. This is the first time I saw them there. So I picked it up, but, um, you know, you can use it or you can use your fingers. It really doesn't matter. It's just something that I saw that was new. So figured I'd show you guys. Um, the, also, the second thing when I was showing you this foam brushes, you can pick these up at the Dollar Tree also. They come eight in a pack. Now, the funny thing about these is if you go to the crafting section where they have these type of brushes and they also have the little dabbers. They come only about, I think it's four or six in a pack. But if you go to the other aisle where they have like more of the hardware stuff, the painting stuff, you can get the exact same brush, but you can get eight in a pack. <laughs> so you get more for your money. <laughs> so I guess if you go to the crafting section, they kind of, you know, limit the amount that you get in the pack but if you go to the other aisle you actually get more for your money so i did that and i just picked up the the packaging is not as pretty it doesn't say crafter square on it you know it's a little uglier but it's a it's a bag like you really don't care once you get the brushes out they're the same but i just thought it was pretty funny that i'm like oh my god get so much more just in this aisle because it's not crafting but they're just the same they're foam brushes and these come in all different sizes so actually you get a lot more because some of these brushes are a little bit wider than others so i thought that was pretty funny i thought i'd bring that up to you so just you know when you're get picking these up in the dollar tree go to you know check out the other aisle too where they have like usually where they have like all the hardware stuff like for the cars and, and things like painting stuff for the house um, that's where I found it and you know when I compared the two I was like well why get this one it's so much better <laughs> so just a little tip for you on that now what are we gonna need we're gonna need plates from the Dollar Tree I I got the small ones they also have the larger ones I have that as well to show you guys but for this particular um, day we're just gonna use the small ones just so I can show you, but you can definitely use the bigger size plate and any type of glass type item would look really nice for this craft. Now they do have the little um, stickers on the back. You just peel them off and clean it up before you start. But other than that, you know, it's it'll be fine. But glass, you can use candle holders that are made out of glass. They have vases, they have glasses now, there's so many things that you can do because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing reverse decoupage so, all right so let's get going on this now i've already taken out the sticker so my plate doesn't have that sticker on it but you see you have my fingers are getting all on it and so the oils from my fingers are on the glass so the first thing we're going to have to do is clean it so I'm going to put it down here and what we're going to need is rubbing alcohol. And I'm just going to take some of this with my little cotton ball or cotton swab, whatever you're using. And I'm just going to take a dab of it. And I'm just going to go through the plate just cleaning it up and really what you're doing is you're just again you're getting all the oils all the fingerprints all those things off the glass just cleaning the surface because you don't want any of that to be on your your design you don't want it to show so you want to start off with that clean surface so just dabbing that a little bit and you don't have to use a ton of alcohol you know just a little bit to clean it up now remember, this is reverse decoupage, so we are cleaning the back of the plate, not the front of the plate. The front of the plate, we don't do anything with because that's where all the food and stuff is gonna, going to um, go on. So you don't need to mess with anything on that side. Okay. All right, so we've got it 
all cleaned up and now we're going to take a look at the designs that we're going to use. Now, I have a bunch of them to show you just to give you ideas. All right, so here's a few. Now, this one that I picked up is just a simple blend of colors. So if you're looking to just jazz up your plates with different colors, you can do that. You can do something like this plaid motion and you're just picking up napkins. You don't have to get the big gigantic napkins. You can just get the smaller napkins. You know, it all depends on what design you want to show. So there's all kinds of ways to do this. Okay. So this particular napkin and one thing you're going to want to look at when you get the napkins is you want to see how many plies. So this one is a two ply. Now, when you get the napkin, you'll have to take off the top layer, which I'll show you in just a minute. But you always want to look at how many plies. Some have a three ply, some have a two ply, you know, so you have to check to see what, how many plies your package is coming with. So they all kind of vary, but just check that. Okay, so this is just one that I got. They had one for Halloween that I thought was pretty cool. Little dark, but hey, it's cute. This one is also a two ply. So that's something to look out for. This one was a little bit more the browns, you know, I thought it was pretty neat. So this is one we'd like to try. And I had a couple of old ones that I have from last year. So I did do a video last year on decoupaging with fabric so if you haven't caught that i think you can just go to my channel just search for it um, it's decoupage with um, fabric with plates and i have one to show you that we did last year and this is what it looks like and this is like over a year old <laughs> it's been run through the dishwasher through the sink. I've washed plates with it. This is just, you know, it's pretty old, but it has held up as you can see. And this is actually just a Dollar Tree plate with the fabric on it. And then what I have is uh, the Mod Podge and some varnish on the back. Now, this, um, the Mod Podge that I use, we'll talk about in just a second. It does need 28 days to cure. And that's just to really hold it together so that you don't get water seeping into the edges of the plate and then your whole um, decoupage will just fall apart. So you definitely want to make sure that you let it cure for the time that Mod Podge indicates on the bottle. And it's just because of the type of Mod Podge that I'll be using. So that is one if you wanna to look to see how to do that with just fabric then go ahead and check out my video on that and hopefully um you guys will enjoy that so here's just a couple more that i have and these are just you know sitting at home these are from last year for other projects that i did this is just a christmasy one you know just like snowflakes so thought that one was cute and then I have a couple of other ones, and this is one of the ones that I'll be using today. And this one is more of a fall. Let's try to center this. Thing. You can see that. So it's like a little pumpkin with the leaves. I thought it was really pretty. And I also have some other ones like for birthdays you know and the one another one that we can do today is one for christmas let me try to center this one and it does doesn't have that ombre let me try to take one out of the pack because the package has like a some kind of name or something on here but this is the actual napkin as you can see i thought it's pretty you know, it's it's a cute little napkin and I think it'll look really pretty on here with the mulberry paper. 
So let's just put these to the side. So those are the different napkins that I have. And again, you know, you can use any one. This can be, this is the type of project that can be for any season. You can do Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween, I mean, Easter. All you got to do is look for napkins that you like. Or they, I've seen some with like little birds, really pretty, outdoor, woodsy. You know, there's just endless opportunities on this. So, you know, don't be hung up because we're doing um, a Christmas or a Thanksgiving one. You can pretty much do anything. So um, let me just pause for a second. I'm going to check our chat and I want to see if there's any questions out there. Let's see. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Robin says, always learning something new. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Looks like you guys can see me and hear you. I, oh, Nana says, I eat our mulberries. Awesome. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit about the mulberry and, and it does come from a mulberry tree. Um, and, and I'll show it to you in just a minute. Okay. This is neat. Uh, one minute tip says, this is neat. I've never tried to decoupage. I'm ready to learn. Awesome. So you go for those of you who've never tried it. I mean, when I started this um, a few years ago, you know, I, I thought it was kind of strange. And I said, oh, let me give it a try. And then I just fell in love with it. And there's just there's videos out there. And there's some people I remember seeing a video of a lady. I, I don't remember her name, unfortunately, but um, she was somewhere in Europe and she does the most beautiful decoupage bowls. I mean, they are amazing. The way they look, I mean, they really look like high-end prestige. They were beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. And so then I said, well, you know what? Let me give it a try. And I started with these napkins and you can do decoupage with so many different things. Um, this is just, you know, like a beginner's way of doing it. So um, I just love the way it comes out. I think it's some, it brings something a little unique to the table. Um, we've got some family coming over for Thanksgiving. So I thought, you know what? It will be nice to have really pretty plates for Thanksgiving or for Christmas or when you have, you know, your little gatherings. Switch up your, your dining wear, you know, just put something new on there. It's just something that's really pretty. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Robin says she saw that one. Yeah, so Robin saw the uh, first video when I decoupaged with the fabric. So that's awesome. Thanks, Robin. Yeah, and and you know, it, it was a lot of fun on that one. So if you haven't seen it, you can go back and watch that. Okay, let's see. Oh, Annette, thanks for joining. Looks like you made it. <laughs> All righty. I love the snowman. Okay, it seems like you guys like the napkins, so I'm glad. Um, let's now move on. I want to go over to the next step. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to, and, and we'll start with this one here. We're going to open up the napkin. And the great thing about these, and it, it kind of depends which ones you buy. Some are a little different than others. So you'll see on this one here, I've got four different designs, all the same. So I could actually do four plates out of this one napkin if I wanted to. Now the other one that I bought, which was the pumpkin, let's open that one. That one only has two. So, you know, it depends on the pack that you buy. You know, sometimes you get more than others, but you know, it really depends. So first thing you wanna do, like I said, if your napkin is a three ply, you're gonna have three plies of paper. If it's two ply, you'll have two. Mine's is a two ply. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take this and I'm gonna separate my top layer from my bottom layer. See that? So I'm just pulling it apart. And you'll wanna do this gently because you don't wanna just rip it off and you know, then you end up tearing the, the top layer. So you are left you know, once I take it out, I have this whole other napkin that, hey, I just kind of put it to the side because I might use it if in case I drip something. 
but you're left with this very thin sheet of napkin. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the snowman one. So let's see. Sometimes they're a little hard to see when you're trying to um, pull it apart, but you could just kind of wet your fingertips a little bit and pull it. And so here's the second one. So just slowly pull it apart. There you go. So you've got that bottom layer. You're not really going to need it, but you could use it just to clean up later. And then you've got the top layer. Very, very light, very, very thin. So the next thing you're going to want to do, and we'll start, we'll just do one for right now. What I'm going to do is this is where it becomes a little bit a matter of preference. So depending on what design you want to put and how you want to put it on your plate, you know, you're going to cut out whatever picture you want from your napkin. So I'm pretty much going to use the entire thing. So I'm just going to cut the whole square out. So let's just grab the scissors, go ahead and cut that piece. And it doesn't have to be exactly perfectly straight, you know, it's decoupage. You know, you can make it as perfect as you want, or you can just kind of wing it. We're just going to kind of wing it on here. Okay, now I just need the one piece. So again, you'll have three other pieces remaining in my particular case. So I could do three other plates if I wanted to with the same design. Now, this is where, again, a little bit of preference comes in. So I'm going to take my one thin sheet of napkin with the design and I'm going to take a little jar of water and I'm going to take my little thin paintbrush and you could use this or if you have the water pen you can use the water pen whatever your preference is I'm just going to go ahead and use the brush because I have it up out and available and what I'm going to do is dip the brush in the water get it a little bit you know soaked in there and then what I'm going to do I want to have a little bit of a unique finish around I don't want my design to come out looking squared so in order to get like this little ripple type effect that I want I'm going to wet and tear the sides of or the outline of the design so I wet my brush and then I just come towards the edge. Let me just move this over a bit. And I just wet it. Just dab it a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, with my fingernail, I'm just gonna pull it apart. And you'll see that it easily breaks apart. And what that does is that leaves you with this kind of ripped effect. And I'm gonna try to bring this up to the camera as close as I can so you can see that. I'm done. So you see that little bit of a ripped effect there? And I'll do a little more so you could see it a little better. It's I just don't want it to look squared. I don't want it to look like it came from a napkin. Okay, so let's see. I see a couple things going on in the chat. Robin says, I'm definitely going to have to try this. Yes, Robin, it's so much fun. Annette says, I saw your video you did with your mom and I loved it. Uh, now mom we needs her own show teaching us crocheting. She is so sweet. Oh, Annette, thank you. That's sweet. <laughs> yeah, she's been crocheting for so many years. And, you know, I've on I only showed like a quarter of the crochet items that she has in that video. Like... She just has so much, like I could be for, for days just showing you guys one thing after another of what she's done. She just has so many. She's been crocheting for so many years. There's just so many projects and she just does it like, she doesn't even look. She just crochets and she's not even like looking. It's like so natural for her. It's amazing, but 
she does it so fast it's hard for me to you know really learn it but i'm getting there <laughs> Alrighty, so i'm gonna keep going with this i'm gonna dab this a little bit more and i'm gonna just go ahead and rip it off with my fingernail and then you just kind of move the napkin around And just there. If you need more water, just apply more water to it. See, so you, you get the pieces off and you can always go back, you know, if you want it to have a little bit more of a, you know, tear, then just go ahead and go back and tear off some more, you know? So let me just show you what it looks like so far. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let me try it. Actually, you know what? Let me try this. I got a little bit of a dark cardstock so that in case the camera didn't let you see it well, I could try to do it this way. And this might help in terms for you guys to be able to see the tearing. So do you see the edges of that? You see how it kind of just has that whimsical tear to it? It doesn't look like it was cut with the scissors it was actually you know looks like a tear so it gives it that kind of antique-ish like look so i think that you know that looks pretty neat so i definitely think that you know just going around this will give it that effect and it just won't look like it's a napkin you know it just looks like it's something else going on so i'm gonna continue to just go around with this kind of continue to rip it apart here you know and all my edges i i don't want any ends to look like it's squared And you can go crazy with this. You know, you can do it as much or as little as you want. And I'm doing the end here on the bottom as well. Just make sure that it's wet before you hit it with your nail. Because you don't want to rip the napkin. You want to just tear it with when it's watered down. Okay. Let's see. Alrighty. I think we're good on that. Let me just show you what it looks like again. Now oh, it's got that ripped effect all the way around. So you see how it kind of just looks like someone just kind of ripped it off from somewhere. Right, it doesn't look like it was cut out of anything. That's kind of what I'm looking to to get here. So, alrighty. I've got a couple others that I've already done. So like here is what the pumpkin one looks like. And for the pumpkin one, I kind of did the same thing, rippled effect around. Now, because the pumpkin um, was on a corner of the napkin. It does have that little bit of a squarish look on the side, but I'm gonna kind of play with that. So you'll see what it looks like in the end. Alrighty. So we've gotten our napkins out. We've trimmed them. We've kind of put some water around it and torn to give it that little effect that we were looking for. So the next thing we want to do is we want to get the Mod Podge out. And let me just put these over. And the Mod Podge that I'm using, this is the dishwasher safe Mod Podge. Okay, let me give you a little close up of that so you can see it. Hope that there's not too much of a glare on there. But it is Mod Podge Dishwasher Safe Gloss. I am using the gloss one. Um, and this is one that will require um, 
couple of, it says one to two hours, but we're doing such a small plate. I think half hour, 45 minutes is fine. By then it's dry. Now, provided you don't put globs of Mod Podge on it, you wanna be very thin when you're putting that on here. So what I did to kind of give it a little bit of a twist, I wanted to add a little bit of glitter. So I went to the Dollar Tree and I picked up these Crafter Square glitter, these little bottles that they have. You can use any kind of glitter. I just wanted to give it a little bit of that silvery type effect since it's Christmas. So I'm going to actually got a little, this is my little bowl that I use for my Maj Paj. And what I do is I add a little bit of the glitter right into the bowl and just sparingly i mean it all depends how much shine you actually want on the plate if you want super duper shine then you're going to use a lot of the glitter you know i just want it to be very subtle so you know i just used a little bit here and then i'm going to take my mod podge and i'm going to pour that into the jar Okay, so once I've poured that in there, I'm then going to take my sponge brush and I'm gonna mix it up. Doesn't look too pretty, <laughs> but you can see that the glitter is now into mixed in with the Mod Podge. So it's kind of hard to see a little bit. I don't use that much of it. You can see that, you know, I don't put a ton of Mod Podge. It's a small plate. We really don't need that much of it. But now that I have that mixed and ready to go, I'm going to take my clean plate and I'm going to take the Mod Podge and just gently go through the plate on the top. I start in the middle and it's a very thin layer. Then I kind of just go out into the edges and just brush the Maj Podge on. Again, you don't have to use tons of Maj Podge. A thin layer is fine. Now, if you were doing a heavier type of material to put on there, then you have to kind of just judge, you know, you want to make sure that your Mod Podge is going to stick your item. So, you know, if you're using something a little heavier, you may need to go a little bit heavier on the Mod Podge, but don't go too heavy because this Mod Podge, even though it comes out white, when it dries, it's clear. So what you want to do now is take your napkin and we're going to take the little snowman and I'm going to put the pretty side of the napkin facing down because we're doing reverse Mod Podge. So take your napkin that you've cut up and torn and just place it on top of the plate, wherever it is that you want your design to be. Now I start in the middle and I just gently rub it with my fingers. Now, another thing that you can do is you can take Saran Wrap and you can just rub the Saran Wrap on top and that will help layer out the design so that you won't have any air bubbles. But this is it's such a small plate. I don't really need to do it. I just do it with my fingers and it comes out fine. And then once you start in the middle and you know that everything here is nice and flat and I don't have any bubbles, then I just work my way out. And I just go all the way around and you just bring down the napkin. And you want to make sure that it's nice and flat. Now, if some of it kind of overlaps, you may want to try to stretch it out. For this particular design, it really doesn't matter for me. So now let me just bring this up a little bit. And if your plate goes a little bit off the edge, like you can see here, I have let's see, a little piece that's sticking out of the napkin. Don't worry about that because we're gonna take care of that. So just, you know, with your hand, gently lay it flat. 
And when you turn this around, you're gonna see your design coming through the plate. Doesn't that look cute? I mean, all we have right now is just the, the Mod Podge with a little bit of the glitter and a piece of the napkin. We're not even done and it's already looking beautiful. So definitely, you know, I like having that glitter because yeah, it does give it a little bit of that shine. And it just, I don't know, gives that a little extra to it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to my Mod Podge And I'm just going to apply it right on top of the napkin. And I'll go all the way around, just making sure that the entire napkin has a layer of the Mod Podge. Okay. And then once you do that, you just kind of have to set it to the side and let it dry. Okay, so it's probably going to take maybe half hour, maybe 45 minutes. I mean, you can put a little fan to it. Such a small plate, so it really doesn't take very long. But this is what it looks like once you are done with that first step. So let me just move this over to the side because I have one that's already dry that I did last night. So this is again, just the napkin with the glitter and Mod Podge on it. It's dried and you can see here what it looks like. So let me just put this paper so you can see it a little bit better. And it's not quite done. So you can see where, well, you see the ripped, the, rip, the ripped napkin here, right? And that doesn't look too great, but that's because we haven't gotten to the next step yet. So I'm gonna show you what it's gonna look like now because our next step is a different, a bunch of different ways that you can do it. Some people will now at this point, they will paint the plate and you can paint it white and then it will look really nice. But I decided I didn't wanna paint it what I wanted to do was use the mulberry paper. And so I ordered mulberry paper. This is what, this is how it came. It's a big roll. Got it from Amazon. And what I love about mulberry paper, it's just beautiful in itself. I'll show you what it looks like. I mean, look at the fibers on this paper. Let me see if I can put something underneath just so you can see it better. Can you see those fibers? You have these long fibers on there. That is absolutely beautiful. And you know, it really comes out on the design. So this is, it's mulberry paper and Mulberry paper, you know, you can, it comes from a mulberry tree and it's a handmade, it's a man-made paper that they make from that tree. They, these are the fibers that they pull together. And when you feel the paper, it's, it's, it's kind of hard because you guys can't touch it, but when you get it, you have kind of a fuzzy side and then you have more of a matte side. The fuzzy side is the side that you want to apply to the actual plate, but it really makes a real pretty design in the back. Now, I cut the piece off. A lot of people will use these like to do watercolors. There's so many different uses for this mulberry paper, but when you tear it, like you could literally see, if I rip the paper, you can see this. Can you guys see this? I mean, let me show you this here. It's pretty neat. I'll try to put both pieces here. You see how when I tore the paper, you see these fibers kind of sticking out? You know, so the, the paper itself, 
you know, has all of these fibers inside and it really makes things, you know, pop when you're looking at that. It's just amazing. I just thought it's truly gorgeous and they come in all kinds of different colors. You can get red, blue. I mean, there's beautiful colors out there for mulberry paper. I just got the white because I wanted to do the Christmas theme. So I thought it would look really beautiful with my design that I have on here. All right, so I covered a lot. Let me just take a pause. I wanna see if you guys have any questions out there. All righty, let's see. Let me look here, it's a little bit easier for me. Oh my gosh, okay. Wow, okay, so. <laughs> Don't know where I left off. So let me just pick a spot. Okay, uh, looks like Robin says she's definitely gonna have to try this. I'm glad my Dollar Tree is only five minutes away. Lucky you. <laughs> Let's see, Annette says, I'll always buy plates from my dining room table and put them on stands with flowers, etc. Yes, and now you can make this. Definitely, I have these little plastic stands that I bought a couple years ago. I think I got them from Amazon. They're just these little plastic stands that you can put the plates on. And I think even Dollar Tree has the stand. They come in different colors. But I like to do is, you know, you can put the stand and then just put the plate and display it. You know, so it, it makes it look really pretty. Let me see if you can do that. You guys could see it. I think this little black paper makes it a little better for you guys to see. So, you know, once you put it on the stand, you know, it holds up the plate and, you know, you can do so many things because once you're done with it, then, yeah, you can put little flowers and things around it. And it really makes a pretty decoration if you have a, fire, a fireplace or a little mantle then you can definitely you know dress it up with that so it just you know makes it look really nice but these little stands you know i got them a while back and you know they're pretty inexpensive they come plastic some are wood they have all different types so you can um check those out too uh let's see all righty uh, one minute tip says, Robin, you're so lucky I have my hubby driving me, <laughs> which isn't crazy, which he isn't crazy about doing all the time. <laughs> all righty, let's see. Trisha said, your moms make beautiful items. I have made mostly baby items. Don't think I could ever make the entire bed spread. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of work, but she does it, you know, <laughs> she just enjoys it. Let's see. Crafting with Robin says, I love the tearing trick. I always wondered how to make the edges of the napkin look natural. Yeah, it's it's pretty neat. You know, just a little dab of water and you can pull out that piece. So it's it's pretty good. I think it's you know, a good trick to have. You can use it for the napkins. You can probably use it for other materials too. It doesn't necessarily have to be the napkins. And then the mulberry paper, you saw how I, when I ripped it, you know, you just exposes the fibers on there. So it makes a really pretty finish on any of your projects. Okay, let's see. Did I miss anything? Oh my gosh. A lot of comments out there. If I missed you, I'm sorry. Oh, Taisha says, I love using mulberry paper when making cards. Yes, that's another um, project that people use mulberry paper for. You know, they use it for paintings. They use it for cards. There's just so many uses for it. It's it's pretty amazing and it has just such a beautiful effect and so many different colors out there. Okay, so Annette says, does the sparkle rub off on the back? It does not. And the reason it does not is because I put the glitter in with the Mod Podge and I mix it up. So the glitter actually dries in the Mod Podge. So it kind of stays and it's pretty permanent at that point. Now there are other ways that you can do the glitter. They, spell, they sell um, these sprays. They have like a spray glitter that you can do, but I, I prefer to just kind of 
throw it into the Mod Podge and mix it up. That way I can control, you know, how much or how little I want of, of a shine that I want on my project. It just helps me out that way. The sprays and stuff is a lot easier. You just go out and you spray it, and, you know, wait for it to dry. But it's just that smell and the aerosol. And, you know, I, I rather just simple, put it in myself. I don't have to have this big jar of spray. And I can get all different kinds of glitters in different colors. And it depends on the design or the project that I'm working on at the time. So I, I like to do it this way. That's just my preferred method. But I'm sure that there's tons of other things or, or products out there that you can probably use to get the glitter as well. This is what works for me. Okay. Uh, let's see. Aisha said the Dollar Tree has those stands too. I use them to put my iPod on or my Kindle. Oh, there you go. So Taisha says that they're out there. Um, so you can probably pick them up there, relatively inexpensive. Oh, Moonlight, Wa Moonlight Wild is joining us from Illinois. Hi, how are you? And Jenny, thanks for joining. Okay, Nana says I tried decoupage once. Mine didn't turn out didn't do turn out but after seeing you i'm gonna try it again yeah try it again because you know it's it's pretty easy once you get the, this down pack now i know we're getting close to the hour so i'm gonna try to rush this up a little bit more because i want to be cognizant of your time so this is again one that i made with the christmas napkin um i also made the second one that had the uh pumpkin on it so that one is also here and what we're gonna do now is apply the mulberry paper to the actual design so i did cut up a couple of pieces here and i just use for sake of time i just use the scissors just to rush through it and the mulberry paper that I'm using is cov is enough to cover the entire plate. Okay, so other ways that you could do it is you could tear up the mulberry paper into a bunch of different pieces and then just decoupage the pieces and kind of like putting a puzzle together, just, you know, putting all the pieces together until you cover the entire plate. Just for time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and just do the entire thing. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to take our plate that is now dry with the glitter and the Mod Podge and the napkin already on here. So we're gonna continue with our reverse decoupage and I'm going to take a little bit more Mod Podge here and I'm just going to apply it to the back of that plate. And I'm just doing enough to wet the plate just so that I can apply the mulberry paper on top. So you can see I've got that nice and wet. I make sure that my edges have a little bit of the Mod Podge, and then I'm gonna take my mulberry paper and I'm just going to put it on top. And just like I did with the napkin, I'm just doing this with my fingers. You can do it with, um, with saran wrap just to make sure you don't get any bubbles but this is a small enough project that I can just do it with my fingers again the fuzzy side of the paper is the one you want down yeah you know, at the end of the day it really doesn't matter but I just like to have that fuzzy side facing down just because it makes it a little bit easier now you can clip since this is a round surface you can clip it because some of your pieces may overlap but even if it does it really doesn't matter not for this project anyway so i'm just going to go around and clip them just to make it a little bit easier and smooth it down with my hands and then what I do is I just take the Mod Podge and I apply the coat on top. Now 
and you're gonna say, well, we have all this excess paper sitting around the plate, you know, what's up with that? Well, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it because we're gonna trim those off in just a minute. So you're gonna wanna make sure that when you apply the Maj Paj, you are getting the entire edging completely wet. You don't want any dry pieces because you wanna make sure that that glue is getting in there. And there you go. And if you want, you can go around with your hands, just making your edges, making sure those edges are getting that Mod Podge in there. And the reason why that's so important is you don't want, with time, you don't want water getting in between the actual mulberry paper or your napkin and the plate because then it'll start to separate. So that's why it's really important to get the edges in there. Make sure it's nice and wet and getting that Mod Podge. Now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut around the plate and you're just gonna cut the excess off. And it's just a rough cut, so don't worry about it. It doesn't need to be perfect just yet. Just cut all the way around. Okay. You can go around with your hands again if you like, making sure that nothing got lifted. And now the final part you're going to need to do is you're just going to need to wait for this to dry. And once this is dried, you're going to want to take sandpaper. And a sandpaper that I got, again, a pack from the dollar store. This one came 24 pieces. It's a sandpaper set. Um, it's really, you know, any kind of sandpaper will do. So if you have sandpaper in your home, you can just grab that. But this is just a pack that I got. Nothing special, just sandpaper. Some people even use a nail file. You can get creative and do that. Got a nail file at your house, you can use that. So you'll want to do this once this is dry. You don't want to do it when it's wet because it'll shift around. So once this is dry, you're going to take the sandpaper and I like to just kind of fold it in half because it's kind of a bigger block. But if you're using, you know, just the um, nail file, then you're fine with that. And then what you're going to do is go around the edges and you're just going to sandpaper the edges. And all you're doing is you're pulling off all of those little pieces that may have been sticking out. So in some cases, because it's mulberry paper and they've got fibers in there, you may want to go back now with your scissors and kind of trim off any big pieces that you may have and just trim those off and then just go back with the sandpaper and, you know, take them off. And you'll see that it'll start to flake off. Just put a little bit of pressure doesn't have to be much. Now, I'm, mine's is wet, so I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here because, you know, you should really just wait for this to dry. I'm just doing this so that you guys can see it. But once you've gone over and you've gone through the entire thing and you've sandpapered sand, or sanded off all of those edges, then, you know, you just let it sit, just let it dry. And then what I'll do is I'll let it dry, go through it with the sandpaper, and then I'll apply a second coat of Maj Paj on top. And then I'll let that dry. Once I've done that, you're pretty much done. And on when you flip it over, you should be able to see how now you have your design and you have that mulberry paper in the back. And you can see how you could see the fibers from the mulberry paper pulling through on the plate. And it just makes a really pretty design. Now, what once this is dry and you've done that second coat, I have one here that's already done. One thing that I did is apply a sealer. And they have a Mod Podge, they have the gloss, and they have the matte sealer that you can pick up. 
and this is just to give it that little extra shine it's just something that you know you don't necessarily have to put on there but i like to have that on to just give a nice finish on my plates especially if you're going to put this like in the dishwasher and stuff so this is what it looks like i'm going to see if i can put it on this paper here just so you could see the effect and you can see how the fibers really come out on the plate and it just makes it look beautiful it almost has that crackled glass effect on there i think it's just absolutely stunning and it makes really beautiful plates something very unique you know it's not something that people can find anywhere and it just makes it something special for your guest and you can use the plate this top plate is we've done nothing to the top so you can put the food and stuff on there and you do have to wait 28 days for it to cure before you stick it in the dishwasher now i would only put it on the top rack of the dishwasher or hand wash it but like i've showed you on my fabric one you wait the 28 days i've put that thing through the dishwasher i don't know how many times but it absolutely makes a very beautiful gift for you to have for your home. Okay, so I see there's a lot of comments on here. I think you guys really enjoyed that. Let me just see if I forgot anything here. No, I think I grabbed air, all of the steps and these are all of the items that you're gonna need in order to make your very own set of dishes with your own special designs on here i hope you guys really enjoyed this um, this was a lot of fun to create there's so many different designs that you can do i mean these things i mean how beautiful are they i can't wait to finish this one i've got the napkin all cut out and this one's just for thanksgiving so this one has another you know really pretty effect and once i put the mulberry paper on there it's really going to pop but I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you have, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and really enjoyed the content. I really love to craft all kinds of things um, with you guys and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new and I hope I was able to give you guys a few great tips. So if you haven't joined our Facebook group, please go ahead and do so. I'm gonna try to post a couple more of these after I finish them. I'll take some pictures and put it out on Facebook. Thank you guys for joining so much. Uh, looks like you guys are coming in with all your comments and everyone seems to love the plates. I'm actually so happy that you guys like it. Thank you guys for joining and tune in next week and we'll have some more crafts for you. And I hope to be crafting with you soon.